30 years ago, almost to the day, Magic the Gathering was born. As part of the celebration of those 30 years, we're going to peer further into the future than we ever have before. Maybe not 30 years into the future, but you're gonna get sneak peeks going as far as 2026. We'll walk you through the roadmap to our major 2024 releases. We'll tell you about sets that are still only code names and a twinkle in our eye. We'll be talking about exciting upcoming Universes Beyond partnerships, and you're gonna hear from Magic Arena about the future of digital magic as Arena celebrates its five-year anniversary. As we peek into the crystal ball here, we'll be sharing things with you that are definitely not final. The further out that we look, the more likely it is that details will change, but we think it's worth it to be able to share with you all of the exciting stuff we're working on for Magic. I'm Jess Lanzillo, Chief of Staff here at Wizards, and with me today are three fantastic humans to tell you all about this killer future. First up, we've got Chris Kiritz, Executive Producer for Magic Arena. Hello, everybody. Next, we've got Athena Froelich, Senior Product Designer for Magic, here to share with you some universes beyond goodness. Hello, everyone. And finally, you know him, you love him. He talks to all of you while he drives, which he promises me is not that dangerous. Head magic designer, Mark Rosewater. Hey, well, I just want to say, Jess, I was involved a couple years ago with Throne of Eldraine, which was the very first time we ever sort of talked ahead and we shared a, a year's worth. And so the idea that today we're talking three years ahead is absolutely, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe you're letting me do this, but I'm very excited to do it. Yes, we are looking further ahead than we ever have before. And as we look to the future, we're thinking about it through kind of like three lenses here. The first lens is, how do we get a balance between innovation and honoring what has made Magic great in these last 30 years? When we're designing Magic, our goal is always to delight fans with both what y'all want and new things that maybe you don't know you want just yet. We spend a lot of time figuring out how to push boundaries and explore new frontiers through all areas of the game. That includes things like gameplay, story, exciting new worlds, fantastical new collectible cards, universes beyond partnerships that let you celebrate your favorite fandoms, and new innovations for digital magic through Magic Arena. The second thing we like to think about is centering accessibility in magic design. We wanna make sure that magic fans have all the opportunities to play and engage. That's whether you started playing today or in 93, whether you're here to compete on the Pro Tour or if you're focused on blinging out your commander deck, whether you are a real magic world building junkie or if you're living for how the design team is bringing your favorite fandoms to life through universes beyond. And that also includes further improvements to Arena, including a roadmap to Pioneer. Finally, we wanted to underscore our continued emphasis on magic lore and story. The conclusion of the Phyrexian arc has opened up the multiverse quite a bit. And Wilds of Eldraine is marking the start of an exciting moment for the next three years of magic. Y'all learned a little bit about Omen Paths, which are allowing for more characters to traverse our worlds, and they're giving us brand new mechanical space for our sets. We'll be exploring the Omen Paths and many of the other implications from the Phyrexian War in a new multi-year story arc. And within this story arc, there are also individual yearly story arcs with their own names. So with that, we do have a special treat for you today. If you want to catch up on Magic Story, we've put together the entirety of the Phyrexian arc in a free downloadable EPUB that you can download right now on dailymtg.com. All right, with that, it's time to look into the crystal ball and peer into the future. Mark, what do you got? Okay, let's start with 2023. Now, we just did a lot of previews at MagicCon last week. Wilds of Eldraine, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Doctor Who. I just want to get into a few points before we move on. Wilds of Eldraine is the start of a new storyline. So it's going to be a three-year storyline. Uh, we've codenamed it Metronome. That's a code name. It doesn't mean anything. There's not some larger like music plot or something. It's just a code name. Each of the years get named. So the Wilds of Eldraine is the beginning of what we're calling the Omen Path arc. So that is the arc for the first year. Um, now, while the Eldraine is really cool, we're going to see the ramifications. I know when uh, the Phyrexian War happened, uh, a lot of people said, oh, it seemed to end so quickly, but the ramifications are going to be felt for years. For example, on, on Eldraine, the king and queen are dead. There was a magical spell used to try to protect the plane, but a lot of people are still asleep because of it. We're really going to find out, like, you know, Will and Rowan, who are both disparate, have to sort of save their kingdom and, and figure out how to solve all the problems they're having. We have Ashiok, who's not disparate, coming back. 
uh, and a brand new character named Kellen, who is going to show up in the storyline, especially, I can't give anything away, but keep an eye on Kellen, he's, he's very important. The other thing that we're trying to do, Lost Caverns of Ixalan is a good example of this. The reason we changed the cosmology of the multiverse is to do new and different things. Uh, and so one of the things we're doing is what I call a backdrop set, which is we're doing a brand new mechanical theme, but we're putting it on a known world. So this is Ixalan, all the things you love about Ixalan, the dinosaurs, the vampires, it's Ixalan, those, those elements will be there, but this is not Ixalan Part 2. This is not a return to the mechanics, necessarily, of original Ixalan. In fact, this was an underground world that originally was a brand new world just set underground, and we realized as we were building it that the perfect place for it to be was Ixalan, and so we made it part of Ixalan. But I want to explain that it's us exploring something new in which, yes, like we can revisit worlds, but just because we revisit the worlds doesn't mean we're just doing what we did last time. Now, another new thing that we're doing in this set is we're introducing something called Special Guests. These are highly desirable reprints that are we're going to match to the world and flavor in the world that they appear in, and they're going to show up, incorporate into the list, and in collector boosters. Yet another way to get cards players want into their hand, because we know that's so important. There is one other cool thing about Lost Caverns of Ixalan, but uh, I guess Athena, this is more... Well, why don't you tell them about it? Thanks, Mark. I'm here to check in now and again with our plans for Universes Beyond, so you know that when I'm speaking, something exciting is about to happen. Universes Beyond is magic, but its core strength lies in the further innovation it brings. Universes Beyond stretches magic beyond its established lore to encompass the expansive characters, worlds, and adventures that not just magic fans, but the world loves. These collaborations are amazing for those whose passions lie between the legendary mechanics of Magic the Gathering and these beloved fandoms. We just celebrated our first major Universes Beyond booster release with The Lord of the Rings, and we couldn't be happier with how much joy it has brought to our fans. Universes Beyond was born out of the idea that Magic can be a platform or a gameplay system to experience our favorite fandoms. Ixalan is a set synonymous to dinosaurs in Magic's multiverse, and Jurassic World is synonymous with dinosaurs worldwide. 30 years of Jurassic World storytelling brought to the tabletop for you to replay again and again to find new and exciting outcomes. Every card features brand new Jurassic World artwork that showcases iconic characters and scenes spanning across many feature-length films. Mechanically unique cards will be found in set and collector boosters that bring plenty of new dinosaur-themed cards to your playgroup. Additionally, Secret Lair is partnering with Jurassic World for not one, but two special Secret Lair drops that were released later this year. We're excited to share more with you as we get closer to the release. I wanted to start off with a bit of a bang, revealing something new, but I'd be remiss if I didn't cover the Universe Beyond sets we previously announced. Doctor Who Commander decks were talked about in more detail last week at Magicon Barcelona. And we are so thrilled to finally be bringing you that wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey collaboration on October 13th. Additionally, following the amazing main set release, The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth is being revisited this November with a special holiday release that brings new treatments, a handful of mechanically unique cards, and some new scenes. We wanted to show you one of the treatments that will be in collector boosters this November, Sauron the Dark Lord in the Borderless poster treatment. We're also going to show you a piece of one of the unique scenes in the scene boxes, the Might of Gladriel, which will have some new cards to add to your Lord of the Ring decks. Speaking of Lord of the Rings, which has a unique place in our digital magic ecosystem, I think it's time we hear from Chris Kiritz on the Arena team. Thanks, Athena. 2023 has been a big year for us, and we still have more to come. Arena's vision is to create fast, fun magic for everyone, anywhere. It's why we're always looking to find new platforms uh, for magic, like when we brought Arena to your phone in 2021 and to Steam earlier this year. It's also why we spent a lot of time this year improving our new player experience. Our goal is to help players find their fun as quickly as possible, whether it's collecting cards, building decks, playing in their first draft. We want people to get into the game easily and, and find that fun that has enchanted people for 30 years. Uh, reaching players is also why it was important to bring the Lord of the Rings to Arena, so players could experience the wonders of Middle-earth wherever they wanted to play Magic and really reinforce the fun and excitement of Tabletop. A little bit later, we're gonna talk about the roadmap for Arena, and you'll see that the Lord of the Rings isn't the last surprising set to land on the platform. And the year's not done yet. For the end of 23, we have some more big moments. Our fifth anniversary is next month, and we're gonna celebrate with players, uh, and we probably have a few tricks up our sleeve to share next month. Hot on the heels of that, we're gonna release Wilds of Aldrain, and with it, 
will include something people have been asking for for a while, improved duplicate protection. This will help all those players who have been with us the last five years and may not need a 13th copy of Duress in their collection. Uh, we've also started to explore a new achievement system to help us provide rewards that go beyond wins and losses and encourage more types of play. We're excited about this space and look forward to sharing more as we build out the system. Finally, we're continuing to explore how we deliver classic card content. For instance, Shadows Over the Innistrad will be the last remaster on Arena for a while, which does mean we won't have some of the exciting remasters you hear, hear about a little bit later, but it doesn't mean we're resting on our laurels. Before the end of the year, we'll take another major step towards Pioneer with the full release of Cons of Tarkir, originally released in 2014. This is not a remaster. It is a full release that will let players experience this fan favorite for the first time or relive those rhino-sized moments of the past. And that brings us to 2024. Mark? Okay, so the first thing of 2024 is Ravnica Remastered. Uh, so we know the players love Ravnica. It's one of the most popular planes we've done. We've been there on three different occasions. So we're going to take cards from all three sets and put them together to make a really fun draft environment that's going to play into everything that makes Ravnica Ravnica, especially the guilds. And because it's a little bit of a throwback, we're also going to have some retro frames that we're we'll putting inside the product. So if you love Remastered, I think you really will enjoy Ravnica Remastered. Okay, which brings us to our, our first new set of 2024, Murders at Karlov Manor. So I explained with Ixlon that we do what we're calling backdrop sets, in which we take a brand new mechanical theme, but put it in a known world. So we are doing a top-down murder mystery set, playing to all the, the, the genres and tropes of murder mystery, but we are setting it on Ravnica. Now, I should stress, this is not a normal Ravnica set. It's not a sort of about the guilds. I mean, the guilds are here creatively, but if you want to play the guilds, we have Ravnica Remastered that's right before this, have a chance to play the guilds. This is a cool murder mystery set. And we've done something really neat, which is there are murders woven into the story, and there are mysteries woven into the game itself where you, the players, will get to solve puzzles and solve your own mystery. Uh, we've spent a lot of time planning on this. I was on the group that did it. It's a lot of fun. I can't wait for you guys to try it. Uh, and there's one other cool thing going on with this set uh, that Athena's going to tell you about. We are taking the fun of Magic and the fun of Clue and combining them into a release that stands on its own for fans of both Magic and Clue. We've partnered with Clue to celebrate their 75th anniversary. Last year, they introduced reimagined versions of the infamous cast, which we have incorporated to create a brand new whodunit experience, combining the beloved evidence-gathering sleuth gameplay of Clue with Magic's strategic depth and the fan-favorite Ravnica setting. Ravnica Clue Edition offers a new twist on multiplayer Magic gameplay, designed in-house by our R&D team welcoming fans of Magic and Clue alike to unleash their inner sleuths and solve the mystery as one of Ravnica's premier detectives. It's a self-contained experience that is unique and fun all on its own. In some regions, this will be known as Ravnica Cluedo Edition, because that's what Clue is known as in many places around the world. Now, I'm excited to talk a bit about our next partner, but we seem to be having some problems. Please stand by. Ah, that's better. We're excited to announce a new set of Commander decks set in the universe of Fallout, arriving next March. These pre-constructed decks take players to the post-nuclear alternate reality world of Fallout. Gangs of bloodthirsty raiders, towering super mutants, irradiated monsters, deadly retro-futurist robots rove the wasteland. Humanity has formed several factions striving for survival, from those locked away in the pre-war vaults to new groups looking to rebuild society anew. This release of Commander Decks is a love letter to this iconic gaming franchise, with each representing one of the Wasteland's many colorful factions represented in magic form, so you can recreate some of Fallout's most famous and outlandish moments on the table with your friends. This release will come out March 2024. We'll share more on this special crossover as we get closer to release, so stay tuned. So Mark, what's next for 2024? Okay, next up, so we've done a lot of revisits to worlds that we've known, but you know, one of the things Magic does great is go to brand new worlds. So next is Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So I talked early about when we when the Frexian War happened and the cosmology got changed, that it would allow us to do some stuff we weren't able to do before. So we had this idea we wanted to do for our set that was all about villains. 
and we could go to any one world and just see the villains of that world, but what's even cooler is what if we had a set with villains from across the multiverse? Well, with the, uh, with the Omen Pass, that's possible. So we have a brand new world where all the villains, or many of the villains uh, have started to gather, and what better place to do this than the Western genre? So pe people have been asking forever, when are we gonna do this? We were looking for the right place to do it. This was it. The villain set, set on a frontier fantasy setting. And the combination of those two has made a very unique set that I think you guys are gonna love. We wanted to do it right. We got cultural consultants and made sure that we were creating something that everybody could truly love. Now, one of the coolest things about this set, like I said, it's villains from across the multiverse. So if you take a peek at this image, maybe you'll recognize some of the villains you might know. Okay, next up, Modern Horizons 3. So Modern Horizons sets are a more advanced set. They allow a little more complex drafting environment and they have access to all the mechanics of the past. But Modern Horizons 1 and 2 didn't actually have access to all the mechanics from the past because there are some things that we just couldn't print on a single face. Modern Horizons 3 fixes that. So Modern Horizons 3 is introducing double face cards to Modern Horizons. So you want to see uh, cards that uh, transform into planeswalkers or take make use of mechanics that you couldn't do on a single face? Well, Modern Horizons 3 will do that. Uh, and making it very fun, once again, a great set to draft. For people that like that more complex sort of drafting environment, Modern Horizons has it there for you. And as you'll see from the pictures, there's some fun themes woven into the set. And speaking of amazing drafting, we're super excited to bring the Modern Horizons 3 set to Arena. This is gonna be fully supported at launch, will be available to draft, and we'll have all of the fun and excitement that Mark is talking about. Now, before you get your hopes up, this doesn't mean that Modern is coming to Arena, but we just couldn't resist adding an awesome draft format, a bunch of really powerful and cool cards, and we think that players are gonna be thrilled to add those cards to their arsenal. Bringing Modern Horizons 3 doesn't mean we've forgotten about Pioneer. Uh, at the end of 2024, our plan is to reach what we're calling Tournament Pioneer, making sure that all of the cards that are relevant for tournament caliber Pioneer play are available for players to add to their decks uh, at the end of 2024. To help us get there, we're gonna deliver Pioneer Masters, a draftable set that fills in those remaining archetype gaps while being a fun experience on its own. For Pioneer players who are looking for something a little bit less spiky, we'll continue to add fun and iconic cards through things like anthologies or through boost, booster pack inserts as we can, because uh, we want to support both tournament play and casual fun play for those players. Alongside these exciting releases, uh, we're also going to look at better ways to integrate digital and tabletop together. We want to create a more unified ecosystem. We want players to be able to go to their local game store on Friday nights and play an FNM. And then on Saturday, when they hop on Arena for a quick match, get notified that their games from Friday earn them enough experience to reach the next level of their mastery pass. This connected ecosystem is the future of what we want for Magic Play and how we're going to bring all of the systems together. That sounds awesome, Chris. I can't wait personally for Modern Horizons 3 on Arena. That is right up my alley. Speaking of cool things, Athena, why don't you take this opportunity to tell folks about how we think about our universe's Beyond sets and what you think they're going to look like? Thanks, Jess. One of the things you may have noticed is that Universes Beyond is not a one-size-fits-all approach. When working with such iconic fandoms, we will strive to find the perfect product fit that showcases the best of our partner. That results in a plethora of different expressions of Universes Beyond in our magic sets. So first, they'll continue to be commander deck-driven releases like Warhammer 40,000, Doctor Who, and Fallout. These are excellent ways to have a self-contained expressions of a world, its characters, and story. We'll also continue to have secret lair drops, some featuring mechanically unique cards like we did with Street Fighter and Stranger Things, and some featuring overlays of existing cards like we did with Fortnite and Arcane. An overlay is what we call the cards that you might think of as reskins. Additionally, we have UB cards that we think of as booster inserts. Transformers was a booster insert for the Brothers War. Jurassic World will be another booster insert. It's part of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan release, but its own expression that happens to be the perfect fit. Finally, we'll have different types of booster releases. So far, you've seen the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth, which is a large booster release, released much like a premiere set. We'll be discussing a second type in a minute. 
That was a lot, but what we want you to take away is that Universe Beyond takes many forms, and the focus is always to create the best experience for our fans. Similarly for Arena, we'll continue to approach Universes Beyond in a similar way, where we're trying to create the right level of engagement uh, for the product, for the players, as well as for our digital schedule. While we love to take each and every product, that just isn't always possible. In general, for main set releases, we're likely to try, try and take as much as we can. For The Lord of the Rings, as the example, we took the main set, starter content, and jumpstart content. For smaller releases, we're likely to lean into cosmetics. Uh, this is our plan for Fallout, letting players add some of that wasteland flavor to their arena experience, even if it isn't cards. For some content, we may not participate at all, uh, like with the Lord of the Rings Commander's content. This can be due to schedule constraints, card complexity, format fit, or sometimes all of the above. Uh, for the next product Athena is going to talk about, we're still exploring what our digital connection be. Athena? We announced a while back a partnership with Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed, and the wait is almost over. In July 2024, we're releasing Beyond Boosters, featuring Assassin's Creed immersive, epic, historical adventures. Every Assassin's Creed game gets in on the fun. This is also the debut of the Beyond Booster, a new kind of booster that features a beloved world. They aren't draftable, but each booster takes you on a journey unique to that universe. Plug in directly to the Animus with both new cards and exciting reprints featuring favorite characters and moments from the Assassin's Creed games. Aspiring Assassins can take their new skills to the deadliest formats, including modern. And now I know Mark is so excited to talk to you about another brand new magic world. Okay, so Wild of Eldraine was the start of the first magic gear, the first arc. Now we begin the start of the second arc, what we're calling the Dragonstorm arc. Why Dragonstorm? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, so two weeks ago at San Diego Comic-Con, I showed a bunch of images that I said we were going to talk about. Uh, and the one that got the most discussion was this little mouse with a little leaf uh, cape fighting a big wolf. Well, finally, we've gotten there. This is Bloomboro. So Bloomboro is a world of anthropomorphic animals where there's no humans. You'll see rabbits and birds and rats and mice and raccoons and... It's a world in which the animals are the main characters. It's it's done in scope so that the each animal is the actual size of that animal, but they, they you know they wear clothes and have weapons and they, you know you get to have a, a really fun, I guess charming is the word I have to use. This is this is probably the most charming world we've ever made for Magic. Uh, it 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 really leans into some of the fantasy elements, but it has this I don't even know how to describe it. It just has this lovely aspect that is really heartwarming and I remember seeing the, when the art finally came in this set it is just it will melt your heart this is just it's a really fun lovable set following Bloomboro is Duskmorn House of Horror so this is a top down uh, modern horror set this is uh, about as far away from we can get from uh, Bloomboro We've done horror before on Ixalan, on New Phyrexia, but this is exploring a different realm of horror, a more modern sensibility, think kind of like 70s and 80s horror. So this is a brand new world. It take, the entire world takes place inside a giant mansion with creepy corridors and weird rooms and uh, really playing into all the fun of modern horror. And I have to say, uh, I don't know if we've ever had a transition between worlds that is stark between the charming cuteness of Bloomboro and, and the creepiness of Duskborn. Bloomboro and Duskborn look amazing, Mark. That wraps it for 2024. Though, of course, do not be surprised if there are more surprises that pop up during the year. This is magic after all. As we go into 2025, Caveat here, we're sharing more than we ever have before. We're in 2025, y'all. This means we're still working out details and specifics. This represents more of what we're thinking than the actual set itself. Because of this, we're gonna go and move into code names. We are not going to tell you the names of the sets. We have not named them yet. Right, Mark? Yeah, this is not also, this is not final art, right? We're, we're, we're no. showing you ideas of things that might become what it'll be. <laughs> uh, so we, remember, none of this is carved in stone yet. We are actively working on these products. We, we are still working on these. These are not finished. Dates could change, concepts could change, all of that, but this is kind of the path we're all on right now. Ready to take us down it, Mark? Okay, awesome. let's talk 2025. Okay, so first up is Innistrad Remastered. 
previous year we had Ravnica remastered because people love Ravnica. Well, people also love Innistrad. So it takes all the different visits to Innistrad and puts them in a fun draft environment where you can mix and match and have a lot of fun. Okay, next up is tennis. So I said uh, when I was talking about Outlaws of Thunder Junction, how the change in the cosmology is letting us do some stuff that we couldn't do before. So we have had this idea for a long time actually to do a death race where we have people racing, but I mean, super serious and racing against each other. Uh, but the Omen Pass allow us to do something really cool that the race doesn't have to be confined to one world. In fact, this is the death race goes across three different worlds. Now, I'm not allowed to tell you what the worlds are yet, but I'll give you a little bit of hint. So two of the worlds are worlds that we've been to in premiere sets that we haven't returned to in another premiere set yet. And the third, uh, the third world we have seen on cards, but we've never visited as a main set setting of a premiere set. So we're gonna flesh that out. And these three worlds will be the racetrack for the death race. So uh, I'm very excited for that. Next up is ultimate. So we, I just introduced a whole bunch of new worlds, but people always ask us to go back to worlds that they, that they love. And ultimate is a return to one of the worlds we get asked about all the time, Tarkir. So we are going back. Um, the phrase we've been using in design is the best of both worlds, which means we want to take all the awesome things about Khans of Tarkir and the awesome things about Dragons of Tarkir and blend them together to make a Tarkir like you've never seen, yet reminiscent of Tarkirs you have seen. Um, so it's very fun and it's a really cool set and um, there might be some dragons in it. Okay, so that moves us next to a set that's not for me to talk about. So uh, Athena, why don't you talk about this next set? We're excited to announce that the Final Fantasy franchise is the next Universes Beyond tentpole booster release coming in 2025. In collaboration with Square Enix, Universes Beyond will be bringing the beloved Final Fantasy series to Magic the Gathering as a tentpole booster release in 2025. The Final Fantasy series is known for its highly imaginative worlds, rich stories, and memorable characters. The set will encompass each main Final Fantasy game that has been released to date, from the original Final Fantasy to the recently released Final Fantasy 16. The set will also be available to play on Magic Arena. Yep, and I don't think it's going to be a surprise that a digital game team might have some affinity for one of the biggest franchises in video game history. Uh, the team is super excited to bring Final Fantasy to Arena and show our love and respect for a game that has touched and shaped so many of us as designers. Beyond Universes Beyond, we're far enough on the calendar, uh, out on the calendar, that for digital games, we need to discuss intents over actual deliverables. Uh, you know, talk mentioned that things are not set in stone. That is especially true for digital. It is not set in digital stone either. So let's talk about what we're trying to do and how it's going to inform our planning as we look at 2025 and beyond. So we have a couple core objectives that we're using to drive our decision making. The first is, how do we create more Magic players? Uh, this is why we emphasized our new player experience this year and why it's, it was important to have the Lord of the Rings delivered specifically so we could reach more players through their love of Middle Earth. We also know that we had some opportunities to provide better experience for those players that we just didn't have the bandwidth to execute on. So part of what we're discussing now is how do we fill those gaps? Uh, what do we need to bring in more players uh, and introduce them to the best game in the world? In order to answer this, we also need to understand what we're missing. So for digital, we think there's an opportunity to better serve players who might be intimidated by jumping into a free-to-play player versus player experience right out of the gate. So we're actively discussing how can we address that? How can we give players a sandbox where they can have fun and be comfortable building their magic skills without the pressures of winning and losing it, particularly in front of other players? Second, we know that there are a lot of types of magic players. Uh, and currently, address, Arena is addressing a specific portion, those who are, again, big fans of the 1v1 player experience. So the, another lens we're using to talk about the future is, if you're already a Magic fan, what digital experience are you missing? And then we can figure out what we can do to address this. This is a big area for exploration. Uh, it has a couple parts. First is collectability. Collectability is a core part of Magic, and we think that there's a lot we can do to improve that experience for players and make collecting more exciting, more rewarding. Take that and allow players to personalize their experience better. Secondly, Arena is a really good, you know, player versus player game, but it doesn't support more than two players. So how do we get three or more players at the table, at the digital table? 
and how are we going to deliver in these spaces? Do we continue to add uh, to Arena itself? Do we look at Arena as a core platform that we can expand and create different iterations that serve different needs? If we're doing that and, and tailor making these experiences for players, how do we keep everybody connected in the ecosystem? This is a bunch of work that we have to figure out and make sure that we're building uh, this one unified magic experience for players who have different needs. So we want to make sure that we have that connective tissue for those experiences. So that's what we're talking about now as we look towards 25, 26, and beyond. Uh, and there's a lot of work to do, but we're really excited about taking what you know about digital magic and expanding it beyond what you've seen so far. So. Mark, I'm going to throw it back to you as we look farther in the future. Okay, so this is the beginning of sort of the third of the magic years. So first we had the Omen Path arc, then we had the Dragonstorm arc, and this year is the Censored arc. Now, it's not called the Censored arc. I'm just not allowed to say what it is because uh, it gives too much away. Uh, but this is the third year of our, our, our next storyline um, of Metronome. Uh, so volleyball, uh, when Kamigawa Neon Dynasty came out, we really pushed the boundaries a little bit on what we could do with science fiction. The audience responded really well to that. And so we decided we wanted to keep pushing. I mean, Jess talked about the beginning of this, how we're pushing boundaries. So we are going to explore a space we've never explored before. Space! We are going to outer space. Volleyball is a space opera set. And we are, we are literally going into outer space. Uh, and there's a lot of cool things. We had to figure a lot of stuff out, none of which I can talk about yet, but it's a top-down space opera set. Next up, wrestling. So uh, wrestling, I said before when I talked about Ultimate, how there are worlds that we have we visited once and we haven't come back to, and the players ask us to come back to them. Well, there's one world that I get more requests than any other world. Uh, this is a common request in my blog I get all the time. And wrestling is finally going back to this world. So people who read my blog are excited right now because they know what I'm talking about. But the rest of you, I will tell you, we are going back to Lorwyn. So Lorwyn is a very charming set built on Celtic lore. Uh, it goes back and forth between Lorwyn and Shadowmoor. We are finally revisiting Lorwyn. And much like we did with Kabukau and Neon Dynasty, we are finding a way to bring back all the things you love about the original world, but find new twists on it and bring a, a new sensibility to the world. So that is wrestling. Which brings us to 2026. I can't believe I'm saying this. 2026. 2026, Mark? Oh my goodness. So like, you know how you're driving a car and the car, the, the gas gauge gets to E, but you keep on driving? There's a, that thrill you get? I feel like we're on E right now. We're like, we're, we're, these are sets that I'm literally in vision design working on right now. Like, I, I, I couldn't even tell you the mechanics of these sets. We haven't finalized them yet. We're still figuring out what's in them. Okay, so yachting is another return. Um, we are going to the plane of Arcavios, which is the home of Strixhaven, uh, the magical college. Uh, it's a, a fan favorite, and um, we are returning to, uh, there in yachting. Finally, we get to ziplining. So ziplining is similar to War of the Spark or March of the Machine, where it's what we call a, a capstone event set that's the big giant finale of the storyline. But I can't tell you the theme I can't tell you the villain. I can't tell you where it happens. I really can't tell you anything about it because everything I can tell you would, is spoilers galore. But suffice to say, uh, I'm really excited on it. It's a set that I'm personally leading because I it's, I was so excited that I asked to lead it. So this is the culmination. Remember, starting with Wilds of Eldraine, we're telling a three-year storyline. We have the Omen Path arc. We have the Dragonstorm arc. We have the Censored arc that I can't even tell you the name of, but they all come together to make uh, once again, we're codenamed Metronome, this giant new storyline that will that will end at the end of the alphabet. Zipline, by the way, is the last of our sports-themed codenames. After this, we have to go to a brand new, we're going to start with A with a brand new theme, but we haven't begun designing those yet. We'd probably talk about those, but we haven't even worked on them yet, so we can't, we have nothing to say. So we have finished talking about everything we are working. I, I honestly can't believe we did this. We got to the end of the alphabet. We sure did, Mark. I uh, could not be more excited for everything that we just walked y'all through today. It truly is a celebration of 30 years of magic, right? I mean, we're pushing the boundaries into the future. We're looking at, uh, you know, all of our new partnerships with the universe is beyond. Brand new worlds going to space. To space. Going to space. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you know, all of these new story arcs, a continued evolution of arena. It's just really a fantastic time 
uh, to kind of take this future looking uh, glance into what we're going to be doing next. Speaking of future looking, let's look into the near future for a moment. We'll actually do something that's like <laughs> somewhat much more realistic for actually what we're doing something right now. Something actually done that we finished already. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to share something uh, g- coming out August 10th. This is the first you're going to hear about it. The first reveal of the Secret Lair Commander deck, Angels. Secret Lair Commander deck. That means you can get it from Secret Lair, open it up, sleeve it, play right away. A Secret Lair Commander deck, Angels. They're just like us, but cooler and with wings. want to thank everyone for tuning in today, uh, hearing all about the future of magic. I want to thank Mark and Athena and Chris uh, for coming in here and telling us all of this exciting stuff. Make sure to stay tuned to the Wilds of Eldraine debut on the 15th. And uh, don't forget to get your tickets for Magic on Vegas. That's happening September 22nd through 24th. We'd really love to continue celebrating the 30th anniversary of magic with you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.